In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use a 555 timer chip. We'll talk about how to read the schematic and how you can change the values of your circuit. So here's all the components that you're going to need in order to build your 555 timer circuit. We got jumper wires, three one kilo ohm resistors, 555 timer chip, an LED, and a capacitor. So in this video, I'm going to take you from electrical schematic, interpreting this and creating this circuit on a breadboard. Now I'm going to use a program called Fritzing. There's a similar program called Tinkercad circuits that you could use to digitally plan out my circuit. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the schematic for my 555 timer circuit and I'm going to create that circuit on a breadboard. So to start out with I'm going to look for my 555 timer chip, find an appropriate component that will fit on my breadboard. I can choose where to go. There you can see that as I connect the 555 timer circuit those green indicators light up showcasing that i've made connection with all of those terminal strips now in order to understand how to make connections with the 555 timer i need to understand what pins here on my 555 timer chip correspond to the numbers shown here on my schematic so let's take a closer look at the 555 timer chip. Here we're looking at a magnified version of the 555 timer chip. You can see it's from Texas Instruments. And the key thing to hear is to notice the notch here. This notch lets you know what each of these pins are. And so if we see this notch, we can know this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now that we know the pin layout for our 555 timer chip, we can start making connections on the breadboard. From here, I can go ahead and start making connections. If I want to be very specific, I can make changes to make sure my color codes are going to match what I actually use in real life. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and connect pin one of my 555 timer to what I'm going to use as the ground for my low potential power rail. Okay, so from here, it's just a matter of making connections with wires and then finding the components to put into onto the breadboard. And once you go ahead and do the work planning out, sometimes you got to make little modifications. This will help you have a plan when you go to make your circuit on the breadboard. Obviously, you need to pay attention to things like R6 and R7 and the capacitor here are all in series with each other. And so we got to make sure that from ground into the cathode of our capacitor and the anode of our capacitor into resistor the 1k ohm resistor here and the 1k ohm resistor here and into the positive power rail we have a path going from there to there from there we can go ahead and make our alternative paths or our parallel paths to pin 7 and connecting pin 6 and 2 between r7 and c3 here all right, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like as we connect it on the breadboard. Okay, first step is we're going to connect pin one of our 555 timer circuit to, to the low voltage power rail. Next, I'm going to connect pins two and six, and we will come back to those later to make additional connections. From here, I'm going to connect pin three to a one kilo ohm resistor, which is going to share a connection with my LED. Now, with my LED, I got to make sure I take care of the polarity. So I want to put the negative polarity connected to the power rail. I'm going to connect my anode of my LED to the same terminal strip as the one kilo ohm resistor and connect the cathode of my LED connected to the negative power rail. Next, I'm going to connect pin four to the positive power rail. Pin five, I'm not going to connect anything to. And then pin six, I need to create uh, another part of the circuit first. So I'm going to hold off on pin six, additional connections. And same thing with pin seven. Pin eight, I am going to connect to the positive power rail. Okay, from here, I need to grab my capacitor and I'm going to connect the I'm going to connect the cathode, the short leg of my capacitor to the negative power rail. And I'm connect the anode to row 25 there on my terminal strip. From there, I'm going to take one of the one kilo ohm resistors and connect that to the anode from 25 to 30. And then I'm going to take another one kilo ohm resistor and connect that from row 30 
to the positive power rail. Okay, now I'm going to take a green wire and on row 25 between the resistor and the capacitor, I'm going to make a connection and I'm going to connect the other part to pin six and pin two of my timer chip. Then I'm going to connect a gray wire in between the two one kilo ohm resistors here. And I'm going to make a connection with pin seven on my 555 timer. Next, I'm going to connect the two power rails on the top and bottom together. Once we connect the battery, we can see that we are getting our 555 timer circuit to work where our LED is blinking. Now, how fast that blinks and stays on is dependent on how you set up your circuit. So depending on what type of resistors you use and what type of capacitor you use, you can change how quickly that light flashes and how long the light stays lit. Here we are at the DigiKey 555 timer calculator, and this is a great tool and resource you can use if you are working with 555 timer chips. So the way we have our chip set up is considered an A-stable configuration. So if we take our values that we used, we used a one kilo ohm resistor for R1 and a one kilo ohm resistor for R2 and a 470 microfarad capacitor, right? What you'll find is we get a time high at around 600 milliseconds, a time low at around 300 milliseconds for a frequency of around one Hertz. Now, what does that mean? That means that the time the light is off is around 300 milliseconds or 0.3 seconds and that the time high or the time that the LED is on is around 600 milliseconds. Obviously by changing these resistor values we could modify that time. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is change my R1 value and what you see is I increase the amount of time that the LED would be on. I don't change the amount of time that the LED is off. Now I'm going to go ahead and set that back one, oh, one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm. Now if I change R2 in my circuit what you'll see is the low time gets changed, right? So now, all right, so if I change R2, what you see is the time high and time low have changed and the frequencies changed. And so we're able to modify the circuit by changing these things around. One of the most uh, maybe intuitive things to change would be the capacitance value. So as I increase my capacitance, let's change this to 800, Right, we're decreasing the frequency, and that's because it's taking longer to charge and discharge that capacitor. If I were to lower the capacitance value, you're going to see that my frequency is higher because it's quicker to charge and discharge that capacitor. This video is part of a larger project that you can find out more about on our website at htm-workshop.com. Also, check out some of our other videos.